This is the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. Today we're with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in beautiful New Ulm, Minnesota. Thanks so much for working with us. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys and a Ride. Ride. And this is the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited Edition. Yes, it is. And today we're going to take you for a full road test and review. We're going to show you and give you our impressions of the driving test. I'm going to talk to you about the specs and the styling. And Nathan, what are you going to do? I'm going to take you for a tour on the inside all the way throughout and talk about the technology and some of the safety systems that are on there. And this baby's loaded. I understand it, it being the limited. All right, Nathan, what do you say? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right. What are we in now, Nathan? Hey, we have traded off the Mustang. Oh, I know. That was, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I tried to convince them to do a 12 month for free lease, but for some reason they didn't go for it. Uh, we are in a 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. You said that right the first time. Usually you say 20 or 29 or 19. Or I call it by some other brand name or something. Right. I, I know, it's, it's rough sometimes. <laughs> I like what they've done with their dashboards. They changed it up this year. Oh, you're in spot or sport. Sp sport. <laughs> I'm in spot mode. Go spot! spot. <laughs> see spot run. No, well, we may see spot run here. <laughs> um, but they, the, the dashboard this year is lower and it's more linear than having that kind of big giant waterfall in the middle that came way down into the console and then you had your screen. Hey lower. now, I like my no, waterfall. I didn't, say, I didn't say anything was wrong with it. I just said they've changed it for 2020. Uh, so it's 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 really it's different, and you were saying because you felt like you were sitting. Higher I feel up, like I'm sitting up higher because you've got a 2011 11. Ford Explorer. You can see that review of uh, that one on our YouTube channel as well. Holy cow! Okay, now that's the sport mode, and that really uh, got up, get up and go, got up and. Oh win. yeah, I think definitely changing the shift point oh. okay i see something you've got in your screen there that's one of my other favorite things besides adaptive cruise it's got speed sign recognition i like yes. that i like that thing i was going to say i like the seats yeah I, they're just the right firmness yep. um you know there's a little bit of bolstering but but not a lot um it's head headroom is yeah it's just it's great so it, it'll be in the rear, and I'll show you that. Um, the the uh, plenty of foot room. Um, yeah, I like the power tilt and telescoping wheel. Um, this does have a heated steering wheel as well, which is one of another another one of our favorite right items. Um, I'll tell you the the, the steering. Uh, there's there's a couple different modes for steering, but um, it definitely tightens up the minute uh, used pull like start moving oh. and pull down the driveway yeah um you know as i was going down the road it, it feels nice and nice and firm you feel like your steering wheel is reacting to what you're doing and there's a little bit of feel back through the wheel uh which i like so it's just but as it's soon as i slowed way down and i was pulling the parking lot yeah. the stream eased up oh okay. which i like okay that's nice so speed sensitive steering yep, yep. the um no but it's it's very comfortable i i i like it it's it's a very nice feel. It's fairly quiet in here. Yeah. A little bit, little bit of sound on. You know, depending on the surface you're running over, you get a little bit of sound from Pretty the tires. Pretty noisy in the driver's seat. Um, well, you know, it was, <laughs> that's because of the person that's sitting here. But, that's because know, of the loose I'm nut. Noisy the loose I'm noisy in the driver's seat the or not. The loose nut behind the wheel. Yeah, well, <laughs> takes one to know one, doesn't it? So down here, it's, I mean, you know, around town, I, can, I can't hardly hear anything. It's so well insulated. All right, so I'm going to pull over here and let Rob uh, drive. But it does have a cool feature, and I know you're not really going to see it, but if I take off my seatbelt, 
Hold on, wait a minute. Maybe if I can. Oh, Rob, Rob will film it. Let me video. Okay. The video is videoing. How's that? To show you, how, wait, you know. Wait, wait, wait. When we take these rides, you know, we, we don't. You look there and I'll film okay. it from the side. We'll do B roll. So when we take these rides, we're really going for the first time. Like we've said before, it's kind of like your test drive, but it's virtual. Uh, and we get to do the driving. <laughs> but, anyways, the experience is, is firsthand. And so. I pulled up and I said, you know, Rob, this has a really neat feature where is if, if you leave the car and drive, but you open the driver's door without your seatbelt on, it automatically puts it in park. So here we are in drive. Let's see, can we? Yep, the lights Car's are running. running. You've taken I've your taken seat, seat belt, belt off. off. So I am going to take my foot off the brake, let the car roll just a hair, and then open the door. Oh, and there we go. Automatically put it in park. That's pretty cool. That's a nice safety feature. There. Yeah. Because with the dial, you've got to think there's an uh, an upward learning curve on using that. And if you forgot to put it in park, now the safety engineered that in where it will put it in park for you no matter what. So that's pretty cool. Boy, that's got instant torque. It's, yeah. There's oh, no yeah. turbo lag in that. I'm surprised. Yeah, no, there's wow. none. Wow, I mean, a little bit more, way more than what I was expecting right away. It and and, and by the way, I put it back in normal mode. It's not in the sport mode. Oh wow! Okay, so this is just normal mode. The the look inside the the outside. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's it's very much still the same Explorer, but they cleaned up the lines and they modernized it in here. So maybe there. Look at that! I try to turn. I can turn it, right? But there, I had it, and I could turn it over to drive but it wouldn't do it because i didn't have my foot on the brake ah. so it flashed up that's where you heard that doo -doo -doo. oh yeah, yeah and yeah, told yeah, me yeah. to and then as soon as i hit the brake it jumped back over to park yeah but the acceleration is zippy uh really good pickup there and you know talking about the ride quality too and the road noise and uh, you think you hit on that as well it's, it's very quiet in here and it's comfortable now there are some hard touch plastics on the door by the window switches and the grab handle and stuff but on top of the door, the door armrest, the center console, all of those are nicely well padded. So it's really comfortable there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very comfortable drive too. And again, it's an SUV and I like I like the height that what that we're setting up at. Yeah. How's it back there? You know, I really like this. You okay, know, my... thank you. <laughs> no, go ahead. My, you know, my 2011, of course, has the bench seat. That was, the, uh, I don't know if that was the only option you could get, but that was the standard. And now the standard is the captain's chair. So I really wanted to sit back here on a drive. I absolutely love them. Uh, I, I think that was absolutely the right move to go to captain's chairs and make the bench optional. What do you think for, as far as the room goes back there, though? What, it, it, you, do you feel it's com comparable to what you've got? Oh, leg room wise? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, which yes. is Which is plentiful. Oh yes, it's, yeah. I mean I've got a I've got if I put my legs straight up I probably have eight inches between myself and your seat. Well, I had my seat actually back a little further than what I would typically ride yeah. in because I wanted to see if you did get back there how much room you'd have and you still got about eight inches. Oh my gosh, yes, I okay. have I have plenty of room and I like this little center console piece. I'll show you that in the review, but yes, okay. no, I I um I really like. I'm a fan of captain's chairs in the rear, having you know had four kids. Right. Um, I always like it when they're separated. Oh, definitely. And then it's an easy pass through to get back and forth, you know, between the third row and the second row if you need to. So, hey, folks, don't forget to click on the subscribe button down below. Uh, don't forget to hit the uh, notification bell at the top to be notified of our new videos when they come out. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Blogger. And uh, give us a like down below if you liked what you saw. He's getting pretty good at this. The all new 2020 Explorer has been completely redesigned inside, outside, and under the hood. Now the biggest news for the 2020 Ford Explorer platform is that it is now rear wheel drive with optional all wheel drive instead of the previous front wheel drive, all wheel drive layout. This is a brand new vehicle, brand new architecture underlying this vehicle. And as I said, it has gone now to the rear wheel drive bias. And Ford says that gives the vehicle a much more different dynamics in handling and competency. 
and uh, in our earlier drive I can attest to that and Nathan can as well being that he owns a 2011 Ford Explorer 2. Now this vehicle does have four trim levels. There is the XLT that starts at $36,675, the Limited starting at $48,130, the ST starting at $54,740, and then there's the Platinum starting at $58,250. You do have a few different engine choices. There's a 2.3 liter EcoBoost i4 engine with auto start stop technology. And that's what this vehicle that we're driving today has. It does produce 300 horsepower. Then there is the 3 liter uh, EcoBoost and that is with 400 horsepower and 415 pound foot of torque in the ST trim. There's also a new available 3.3 liter hybrid engine. Now out front, there's a gr the grill has the bright silver painted mesh insert and chrome bars. Walk around and get you to that. There we are. And on the front end, there are LED low beam headlights, LED fog lights. You have rain sensing wipers and you also have power fold mirrors. You do have 20 inch polished aluminum wheels and those are covered in P255, 55R20 all season black sidewall tires. Some of the safety features of this vehicle is automatic emergency braking with pre-collision assist and you also also have available reverse brake assist. Now the roof rails are satin aluminum with black end caps. You also have the chrome body side molding cladding accent. There are acoustically laminated window glass on the front side row and then privacy glass second and third rows and there is a rear view camera. Now one of the cool features that Nathan and I just found as we were looking at this rear view camera and we've got a close up picture of the camera but it looks like there is a little washer nozzle there as well. Now we saw that on I believe it was the Cadillac Escalade and that's one of the pet peeves I have with my cars having the backup camera anytime it's raining and it gets a little dirty most new cars get really dirty on the back side. Every time you get in and out of the vehicle, I just kind of walk back there and rub my finger over it to clean it off. Well, this is really cool that it's got a washer nozzle to take care of that for you. That's a really neat add-on. I love it. Okay, on this vehicle, there are LED tail lights. There is a Bali, Bali? Yes, Bali. <laughs> no, there is the body colored lift gate spoiler. And it also does have dual chrome exhaust. There they are. Let's see if I can center that up a little bit more for you. There you go. And it does have the hands-free uh, foot-activated lift gate. You can see it also has the trailer hitch with the seven pin, four pin connectors. You can also, optional, get hill descent control, terrain management system, intelligent four-wheel drive, which is this vehicle does have the four-wheel drive, uh, or you can get the standard all-wheel drive. It does have the blind spot information system, as I said, the rear view camera. It has lane keeping assist and automatic emergency braking. Those things, uh, Nathan will cover uh, some of those things on the technology part of the uh, inside of the vehicle. Now maximum cargo is 87.8 cubic feet. And I want to show you this on the cargo area. But I want to show you a neat trick that Nathan found. It's with the cargo tray here. As it's in place, it's carpeted. And then you have little side covers as well. And on the back side, they're plastic. But also on the back side of this is plastic. So what you can do, if you've got wet things or something like that, you can completely turn this upside down, set it right back in there. And then these will actually change sides as well. And now, instead of the carpeted area, you've got a hard plastic area that uh, you can put wet things back there if you need to. Or, as we also found out, if you don't want this at all, you can just store it 
right below down here it slides in and then you you, you can have your uh, area to stand groceries up and things like that that you don't want rolling all around but also wanted to show you and I was tugging on this earlier because I'm not used to this but this does have powerful seats and there's a button for left and right or left and or left or right separately or left and right together so if you want to put them both down at the same time now with those two seats folded down and you're looking at maximum cargo of 87.2 cubic feet now when properly equipped the Explorer can tow up to 5,600 5, pounds and the class 3 trailer tow package is available with the 2.3 and of course that's what we have here and you see the class 3 hitch uh, it's also available with the 3.3 liter hybrid engine and it comes standard with the 3 liter echo boost engine overall i think they've done a really nice job in making this more of an evolutionary look instead of a revolutionary look you can see from a distance it still has the basic silhouette of a Ford Explorer. However, they've cleaned it up and they've modernized the lines. Look at the tail end here. You can see that's quite a bit cleaner than it has been in the past. And on the side, you still have the cladding going around the bottom, base of the bumpers, over the wheels, uh, down below the, the, uh, the door sills and up toward the front. And you still have that familiar looking front end still have that familiar looking front end but they did add a little bit more character to that where the headlights are kind of slanted in a little bit and the grill is uh, very nicely done and it just it gives it a little bit more of a menacing look it's kind of cool so overall they've done a really good job with the styling I like this line here Nathan was talking about this earlier when we were talking just in on a side but it looks like it dips down a little bit so it gives it a little bit of detail and gives it a little bit of flow I really do like how they've done the tail lights where they do stick out a little bit from the side of the vehicle. They protrude a little bit. I like that. And then this is uh, a carryover, this design theme with the C, C pillar going into the darkened D pillar that makes it look like it's a rear wraparound glass. And then of course you can see the roof rack up top. Overall, very nicely done with the styling of this vehicle. I like what they've done. Again, I think they, like I said, it's evolutionary and not revolutionary. They didn't throw away the mold, and, well, they, re, they redid the vehicle, but they didn't throw the vehicle completely out and redesign a completely new look. They kept the very popular Explorer look, but they modernized it, and they did a really good job at doing that. All right, stepping into the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. Uh, you got your window controls here, and then you have got uh, your mirror controls right here along with the cursor for it. Uh, this is your power folding mirror button, and this is your window lockout button. Up here you do have uh, three position memory, and then uh, your lock buttons along with one of the 12 Bang & Olufsen speakers. Okay, you've got some nice storage down here and uh, storage down here for a bottle. Um, down here, the seats are 10-way uh, power each. Uh, so you have uh, forward, backwards, up and down, and then you can tilt the, just the front up or down. And then you can tilt backwards. And then you've got the lumbar for the back of the seat right here. Now moving over here, we have something new. Uh, and you see it says pull 2x so you pull once to release the trunk and you pull the second time to release the hood latch uh, that way when you go up front you don't have to uh, reach underneath the hood and find that little latch you do have a foot rest down here which is nice and one of the really nice features i really like here is the fuse panel so i pull this off and you can see inside the fuses are easily accessible and you don't have to crawl underneath the uh, steering column to get that okay Coming up here, you got your light controls along with your uh, trunk release at the back. Um, you got your fog lamp switch here, and then you can rotary this dial here, and you can have it off. You can have parking lights, you can have auto lamps, and then you can have uh, just turn your lights on manually. Over here, you got your dashboard dimming switches right here. And then the steering wheel is power tilt and telescope. 
I'll go over the Drivers Information Center and the uh, Infotainment Center, the Copilot 360 Assist Plus, in a separate video, but just to give you a little look at it, uh, there's what the dash looks like, and you have got uh, analog gauges for RPM on the left and speed on the right, as well as fuel down here, and then your uh, engine temperature, along with your selector indicator down here. Uh, basically, on the steering wheel, you have got your cruise control functions up here and then uh, you've got volume controls down here on the right side all these buttons up here control the driver's information center screen in the middle and then this button down here is your voice command this does come with voice command navigation and then for your phone buttons and then also a cursor uh, to cue through music on your infotainment center you can put this in manual mode and use the paddle shifters that you have right here behind the steering wheel. Over here, you do have a button that turns on your lane keeping assist system as well as your blinkers and your high beams. And then over here, you have your windshield wiper controls. All right, moving over here briefly to the infotainment center. Like I said, I'll cover this in another video. Um, but this is a Bang & Olufsen 12 speaker system with subwoofer and it has a, a fantastic sound and um, it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and uh, the screen itself has um, it's all touch but you do have some physical controls down here so you have uh, a fast forward or like a rewind fast forward kind of feature down here power and volume down here and then tone and then you can switch like radio stations and stuff uh, down here or you can toggle through the screen okay now um, home button is right up here so right currently I'm in navigation so if you're in a screen you need to go home look at the top left corner here are your quick shortcuts to different apps. So you've got cow, that's an old one. your audio, old. which we will turn the volume thing? down. And you got your phone, which we don't have one connected here, but that's where you can add a phone. You got your navigation. You do have apps that you can look at here, um, either adding a phone device or uh, finding a mobile app or using the Sirius XM Travel Link, which is part of Copilot 360 Assist Plus. And then you can, of course, go in to settings. Okay, and then you can scroll through. There's three pages of icons here that you can click on, of course, and adjust whatever you want. And that's the ambient lighting color selection this vehicle comes with. All right, moving down a little bit, you do have a little storage cubby underneath here with a removable mats so you can clean it. Um, and now in addition to the stereo buttons, there are three other buttons up here. This is your park assist. This will automatically help you park parallel park or do a 90 degree backup or a right angle backup. You control the uh, throttle and the brake and the gears and it controls the steering. Over here is your hazards and over here is your backup camera or your front camera view. Okay, right now we have a front camera view on. This does come standard with a front camera. So here's a close-up of the front mounted camera and as you can see it also has a washer nozzle. So both cameras can be uh, cleared off with your windshield wiper spray. And then I love that 360 and we'll talk more about that in the other video. Down here you've got climate controls, a, um, you've got your adjustments for this passenger and driver, and you have got, of course, power, you've got the uh, mode button here, you've got uh, max to frost, you've got the auto climate. This is tri-zone auto climate control. Um, you can access the full menu down here by clicking on this button, and then the screen will change and give you additional climate controls. Okay. Um, recirculatory um, this button here will if it's on then the passengers in the rear can control their own uh, air and heat uh, if it's off then it's uh, you drive if it's off then it's controlled by the driver max AC okay now um, because this is tri zone you can set temperatures of course for each of the zones as you can see what I'm going through is changing it for both zones if the passenger simply takes and changes there as you notice the driver stays the same okay but in order to get them to sync back 
then you do need to push the menu button and go up here and turn dual off and then they resync. So that is where that is located. This does come with heated and cooled seats, three stage each on both sides, and uh, as well as heated seats, and I'll show you that in the rear. This does have a heated steering wheel. Okay, moving down here, we have what we would typically see in a Ford Explorer, this little uh, opening area. And down here, you've got a, a regular USB along with the USB-C. You've got a nice deep storage area that would fit a full-size phone. And then underneath that here, you have a 12 volt outlet along with extra storage down here. And then you got a nice little cord escape for your power cord to come out. This will also, these USBs will also connect you to the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You do have what look, appears to be a phone holder right here, but it could hold other things as well. You got illuminated cup holders. And then in the center here, we do have a rotary uh, shift knob. That's, that's a little different to get used to, but you just rotate it and it will go through the different gears for you. If you want to do manual, uh, you can just push the M and it will go into the manual position. You can use the paddle shifters. This is your uh, parking brake. This one here is a, a hill hold. And if the vehicle senses that you are um, on an incline and you've got the brake fully depressed, um, when you let off the brake to accelerate, it'll actually keep the vehicle braked until you press the accelerator so you don't roll backwards. Okay. Down here, you have the auto start, auto start stop feature that you can turn on or off so you, for better fuel economy. You've got traction control and then you have hill descent control. Now, one of the interesting things I learned about this hill descent control is that you can control the speed. It's, it's anywhere from about 2 to 20 miles an hour. And you control the speed by using the cruise control speed set. Okay, if we take a look back here, we have an additional really cool feature that I love. This is the wireless charging pad. Underneath the armrest, you've got a, a removable tray. You have a backlight, and then you have a 12-volt outlet as well. There's another additional little storage down here, and um, it looks like it would probably fit a small pair of pliers or um, maybe, I don't know. Not quite sure what that is designed to hold, but it would hold something small like a pair of pliers, I think. Moving over here to the glove compartment. It does have that little clip over there, and when you uh, unbox and unpackage everything, you can hold your driver's manual up in there so that you have access to the rest of the glove compartment for your stuff. All right? Moving up here, we have an auto dimming rear view mirror. And then up here we have the controls. This one does come with a panoramic sunroof. And so um, this is your slide for your shade. This is the slide for the front sunroof part that opens up. And of course, these are your lighting controls here. And then uh, this one here turns on both lights at the same time. And then of course you have a sunglass holder right here. Both sun visors are uh, telescoping and then the mirrors are also lit. There's also this little handy holder clip here so you can put your driver's license or insurance cards or whatever you want right up in there. All right, uh, in addition to having some grab handles uh, right up there on both sides, um, which is nice. Okay, let's hop in the back. In the second row of the 2020 Explorer, we have the Bang & Olufsen speaker here on the door. And then we have uh, you know, the pass-through handle. You do have a bottle storage at the top, which is nice. And then you do have some additional, it could be a bottle down here or whatever you want to fit in there. Um, the seats are, there are several things that I like about this second row. This has been really designed since my 2011. So here they are in no particular order. I really like uh, these rubberized steps right here uh, to help people get into the third row. Uh, I also like the bucket seats. I like it that it has dual seat back pockets, one on each side. And then my other favorite thing is, of course, the third part of the tri-zone temperature system. Um, this has been updated significantly since mine. Uh, this has a lot more LEDs in there, but there's your fan control, your 
heater cooling uh, temperature control, your mode control, power on or off, and then it does come uh, with two stage heated seats in the rear. Now in addition to that, you have a two, you have two USB plug-ins right here, uh, uh, US, regular USB and a USB-C, and then over here you have your uh, household outlet. Now there, there's a nice uh, console area between the two bucket seats. We always talk about headroom and legroom. As you can see, I've got plenty of legroom here. I've also got a lot of a lot of headroom. My other favorite thing about this second row is how thick the armrests are. Now we've looked at a couple of uh, three-row SUVs. And I believe this is about the thickest armrest I've seen. I like them when they're thicker. Uh, it just gives you more support for your arm. Okay. Now, how do we get into the third row? Well, it's very simple. You see, you know, just pull this lever, and this is going to tilt and pull forward. There we go. Okay, so crawling into the third row of the uh, 2020 Explorer. I have about as much room as I had in my other my, in my 2011 Explorer, and uh, so it works for short distances. Works for smaller kids just fine. It's not really meant for adults. Um, does the job it's supposed to. Um, I have ample headroom. Leg room is tight. If I look down here, I can fit my hand there, but the seat is, as you can see, is pulled up quite a bit further, pushed farther forward than this one. Uh, so it would be a little crowded for this person. But since you have that nice captain's chairs, you can stick your knees in the middle and they can push their leg back. And like I said, if we're going up for a short trip, it would work just fine. And for kids, it would be great. All right, so in the back row here, you have got uh, cup holders on each side. Um, I like how they've indented this little area to give you room uh, for getting your hand in between the, <laughs> the side and the, and the bottle. You've got two little pocket storages. This one's a little deeper than see it's about a finger length deep this one's a little shallower okay. uh, you have your uh, air vents up here in the ceiling okay. and then the other side has the same setup two of the 12 speakers are back here right by the seat belt so you get it right next to your ear which is nice Hey, okay, let's talk about space. All right, so sitting in the back row, I've got plenty of headroom. That's not an issue at all. Uh, down here, you can see that my knees are, um, well, I got about an inch. Okay, uh, so it would be comfortable for an adult for a short distance. Uh, it would work for kids for a long distance. Uh, works for pets really good. Well, this, this is more room than I had in my 2011. Um, this seat is, is pretty much all the way back at this point. So the next question is, how do you get out of here, the third row? Well, it's real easy. You just find this button and push it, and it folds forward and pulls forward. So it gives you uh, the access you can get back out through those steps. I also like to mention that this particular model comes equipped with sunshades, which is nice on a warm day like this. Okay, want to show you my favorite thing of this vehicle and we're going to a styling detail. If you can see this line right through here, it's just the way it cuts through the belt line and then it kind of angles down a little bit and then toward the front, I'll get a better angle here, toward the front it kind of dips down into the wheel well. I really like that styling detail. I like what they've done with that. It uh, gives a sense of motion and that's my favorite design detail of this vehicle. All right, so my favorite feature of this 2020 Explorer, although there are many, 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 is our, are these captain's chairs right here in the back. 